two weeks before the election. How's it going? Uh, so far, it's going great. Um, we're getting a lot of positive feedback from the advertising that we're doing. Uh, we've done an internal poll, which uh, makes the, the race within reach. There's still a lot of undecided voters out there. And I think the last two weeks will be a push towards getting those undecided over to me. Uh, and I'm enthusiastic and optimistic about the race. Tell us why people should drop their support for Chris Smith and vote for you. I think this election is unique in this district in that you have such a clear choice on so many issues. Let's first talk about the economy and getting people back to work. Chris Smith's solution, along with the Republican Party, is cut taxes and cut government spending. Cutting taxes means you're getting less revenue into the government. And cutting spending means even less revenue is going out. You know, New York, uh, New Jersey is uh, an interesting state in that for every one dollar it sends to Washington in tax, it only gets back 59 cents. That is the lowest, the lowest ratio in the country. Uh, and it's time that that changed. What's going to happen if Smith policies go into effect? There's going to be less money coming to New Jersey. What's going to happen to your property taxes? They're going to continue to go up because the lack of money coming to New Jersey means that the state and the municipalities don't have money to pay for public schools, to pay for other types of services, and that goes to your property taxes. I mean, just a few months ago, Governor Christie said, oh, we're going to cut back spending and we're going to... Um, put a, a limit on what municipalities can raise taxes for. And then a couple weeks later, we got an increase in our tax bill. Because it doesn't work. If there's no money coming to the state, it's going to come out of your pocket. My plan is different. My plan says the federal government has to lend money to small businesses, either directly or by um, guaranteeing loans. When small businesses get money, they then have money to hire, and more people will get to work. Second. We need money on infrastructure projects. We need a train to New York. That will bring jobs, that will increase property values, and it will also be able to bring shoppers and tourists to our area to shop in our, st in our stores and in our restaurants and our hotels. So on the e e economy, we're very different. His solution is a solution that we saw eight years in George Bush's administration that failed and led to an economic catastrophe. My solution is a solution that's slowly, slowly working. I mean, Smith voted against TARP, which was the bank bailout. If it was a court, if it, Smith had his way, a, an elderly person who had a couple of hundred thousand saved for their retirement would have gotten a hundred thousand dollar FDIC check, and the rest would have gone up in smoke. They would have been out their savings. The TARP proved to save our banking system, and the government has recovered from the banks almost all the money they laid out. So, voting for Smith on the economy is voting back to a policy of failure. With regard to property taxes and local issues, it's clear. Smith's plan will raise and raise and raise the property taxes. Because less money from the government means less money for the municipality. My plan is exactly the opposite. We need education funding into this district. Because your highest line item on your tax bill is public schools. Go look at your tax bill. It says public schools. We need monies into the public school that will directly lower the amount of property taxes we're raising. Another very, very um, stark difference between me and Smith is how do you deal with the environment. I'm for renewable energy. I'm for uh, putting tax incentives and federal grants into wind power, solar power, but you can't force the manufacturers into cap and trade because then they won't be able to compete with with China and India and Russia and, and the former Eastern Europe lot, that they don't play by the rules and they don't keep cap and trade. Smith voted for cap and trade because he doesn't care about small business here. He just doesn't care. And finally on health care. Um, Smith wants to scrap all health care and, and stay with the present system which, which shows us an increase in insurance premiums every year, year after year after year. I also think Obama's plan is messed up and it has to be fixed. But there are a couple of things that are good.
first of all, keeping the kids on your insurance till 26 is a good thing. Funding Medicare is a good thing. Um, uh, making sure that insurance companies can't reject you if you have a pre-condition, uh, that's a good thing. What's bad about it is you can't force businesses to buy insurance. That's un-American. Therefore, what I propose is we get a public option. What that means is very simple. You come in, and whether you're employed or not employed, you have a choice. You could either buy a public plan that's cheap, something like Jersey Care or something like that, but with a, with a premium, or you can stay on your Oxford plan or your Blue Cross plan and pay the money. But this way you have a choice. And if you have a choice, prices will come down. I think the, the Republican plan for health care is doomed to failure because it's, it's a maintaining of the status quo. And the status quo is sh showing us 10 to 15 percent increase in health care year after year. And we can't afford it. So that's where today, I think when you get past the slogans, look, the Republicans have beautiful slogans. Let's take our country back. Uh, no taxes. You know, it's like a color war game. Blue team, red team. But when you get past the slogans and you look at what the policies will lead to, you will see that those policies are a return to failure that led us to economic collapse that we see today. What specifically do you propose that would benefit the Lakewood community? Well, first of all, the train to New York is going to be a home run to the Lakewood community. Uh, Smith says, well, you know, I also like the train to New York, but there were towns that, that objected to it. You know, it's really easy to pass the buck. The fact is, the man's been in office for 30 years, and for 30 years we don't have a train. I know what it's like to commute to New York. I commuted on a bus for 12 years. For the last four years I've been driving. I know what it's like to get stuck in traffic. I know the, all, the, all the cons about it. Smith doesn't know what a New Jersey transit bus looks like. I don't think he sat on one for the last 30 years. If we get a train through the mom line, here's what it's going to do to the community, as I said before. One, it's going to bring jobs. Two, it's going to bring commerce here. Businesses are going to go up along the train line. People are going to be able to get here much more easily. Now, it's not just we're going to be able to get to New York quicker, which is going to bring our property values up, because everybody knows once you have a train and it takes an hour to get to New York instead of an hour and a half on the bus, automatically your prices are going to go up. The people from New York who want to come here for the day and shop without paying tax on their clothing, which we have here in New Jersey, or they want to come to the shore instead of going to the Hamptons, it's going to be much more easily available, and it's going to be a boon to our businesses, and that's going to bring not just economic prosperity, but that's going to be tax revenue also in at the local level, which will again enable municipalities to meet their budgets without constantly raising taxes. I'm also for school vouchers, private vouchers. Um, I think we need uh, federal help to help fund our private schools so people have a choice. Um, Smith voted against funding for school vouchers. Don't, don't be misled. He voted against it. Um, Smith is not a friend on this issue. And I think someone who knows what it's like to pay yeshiva bills, to knows what it's like to pay tuitions, is going to be motivated to try to push that agenda. So certainly on those two areas, I think I'm going to be very helpful to the community here in Lakewood. Anything else you'd like to say to the Lakewood Scoop readers? Well, I think in closing, I know that Smith has been around for 30 years, and, and a lot of Lakewood voters are traditionally Republican supporters. But at the end of the day, all politics are local. And the question is, who can better serve our needs in Washington? A 30-year incumbent who has no shot at ever obtaining a leadership position. Forget it. He, he's not in, the, in any seniority position on any important committees. And when he once had a leadership position as Veteran Affairs Committee Chairman, his own Republican colleagues threw him off the committee. So it's not like if you get rid of him, you're losing a potential leadership that's going to bring us benefits. The answer is no. He's on a crusade to save people in Africa. You know, he talks about how many bills he passed. When you read the bills that he's proposed and passed, there are all these feel-good bills about uh, don't tr not, not trafficking women in Africa, you know, child abuse in third world countries. Yeah, everybody feels you know, sympathetic to that. But the question today is, how do I put food on my table? How do I get a job? How do I pay my mortgage? How do I pay my property taxes? And I think on those issues, how do I afford my yeshiva tuition? I think on those issues, I'm the guy who knows what it's like to live here and has lived the life that you live. 
and therefore is more attuned and is more motivated to get the results that are important to you than Chris Smith, who's really out of tune with what we need.